Alright, you heard about AOT in .NET 8. That's great. But what is AOT and how can we use it? In this video, you'll learn everything you need to know about it. We're not just scratching the surface here. Let's find out how it works, when to use it and when you might not want to use it. You will also find out that AOT has been there with .NET 7 already. However, you might not have heard about it and that has its reason. Before we open Visual Studio to code an application using AOT, let's quickly think about and learn about what AOT actually is. AOT stands for ahead of time and is the counterpart to JIT or just-in-time compilation. With ahead of time compilation, we generate the native code that runs on the machine right with the compilation of the application. Whereas with the traditional JIT compiler, we turn our c -sharp code into IL code that will be then transformed into native code using the JIT compiler on the target machine. For example, a WinForms or WPF application is compiled to IL code on my developer PC and executed on another computer which uses the JIT to compile the EL code into Windows X64 native machine code. Now, let's see how ahead of time compilation changes the traditional .NET application architecture. We also have the C Sharp application code and the .NET SDK. Additionally, we have the AOT compiler. In the case of compiling on Windows, we need to install the C++ desktop workload to get the C++ compiler. When we compile and run the app locally, we do not use ahead of time compilation. We can run and debug the application like all non-AOT applications. However, when we run the .NET publish command, the compilation will produce native code instead of IL code. When executing the application, we still need a .NET runtime. The application is still managed, has a garbage collector and works like any other .NET application. The only thing missing is the just-in-time or JIT compiler. The executable already contains native code and the operating system can directly launch it like a native C++ application. The output is a single executable file and its file size has been reduced because we trim all non-required code. The executable is also platform dependent and non-portable. With .NET 7 we could already use ahead of time compilation. However, it was limited to console applications and therefore we haven't heard a lot about it. With .NET 8, we can now use ahead of time compilation or AOT to implement ASP.NET Core based APIs for cloud native solutions. A new ASP.NET Core Web API native AOT project template is available in Visual Studio 2022 17.8. There is also a separate project template for gRPC using native AOT. Again, on Windows, we need to make sure we have the desktop development with C++ workload installed. Otherwise, the .NET publish command will fail. Let's create a project and take a look at it. The generated project is pre-configured for native AOT and comes with a single program.cs file. It uses the create slim builder method instead of the create builder which we normally use and it uses minimal APIs instead of controllers. Let's quickly look at the different application builders. The create builder we often use fully configures the application with services we use such as configuring it to be able to run on IAS. We don't get that with the slim builder. Also, the routing system is still there but we cannot use regex routes. Those changes allow for smaller executables. We'll look at the other parts of the code later. Now let's quickly look at the project file. We see the publish AOT property which tells the compiler to use ahead of time compilation. Back in the program.cs file we see that we have a to-dos route that returns a collection of five to-do items. Let's launch the application and test it in the browser. We get the slash to do's route and the example data is returned as expected. 
Now let's open the file explorer and navigate to the project. In the bin debug folder, we see that we have a DLL and an executable file. Both those files are very small. The reason is that we don't use AOT when we run the application from within Visual Studio. Also, as we see from its size, the application is not self-contained, meaning it needs a .NET runtime installed on the computer running the program. It works for a developer machine and is the fastest way to start the application when working on it. Now, let's publish the application using the console to see how AOT works. We can see that the step of generating native code takes much longer than when we just compile it and run the application. Let's head back to the Windows Explorer. In the bin folder, we now also have a release folder besides the debug folder. With .NET 8, the default for publishing is release instead of debug. In the release folder, we have a .NET 8.0 folder. And within that folder, we see the Win x64 folder. Within that folder, we have all the DLLs that we need to run the application. In the publish folder, we see four files. We have two application config files. We need them when we want to load configuration from files. If we load the configuration from environment variables, we don't need them. Next, we have the executable and the PDB file. The PDB file is for debugging. All we need to run the application is the executable. And as you can see, the executable only takes about 9 megabytes in this case. Let's test it. I launched the application using a Windows console. As you can see, we get the log output that the application is running in production mode. Let's try to access the API using a browser. As we can see, we get the data as expected. What do we learn from this simple example? When we launch the application within Visual Studio, it gets compiled into IL code and we still use it exactly the same as any traditional .NET application. However, when we use the .NET publish command, the code gets transformed into native code and we get a single executable file. There is one more thing I want to show you in the program.cs file. Besides the record definition for the to-do type, we also have an app JSON serializer context with a JSON serializer attribute. The context is registered with the configure HTTP JSON options. It's the code that makes the data serializable without using reflection and therefore executable without a JIT compiler. Great, we now understand what AOT is and how it works but what advantages does it have over traditional .NET applications without AOT? Of course, we get better startup performance because the application does not go through the just-in-time compilation at startup. The transformation step from IL to native code does not happen because it was already completed when the application was compiled. It's especially helpful when building cloud-native applications that scale a lot. You can save a lot of time when frequently starting new instances of your applications. Another advantage is the smaller app size. With AOT enabled, we get rid of code that we don't need. AOT applications compile to a single executable, meaning the .NET runtime is part of the executable. Of course, we need less code when we do not include the just-in-time compiler code. Also, with trimming and other techniques, we get the file size down by almost 10x. It is helpful when deploying the application. Last but not least, we use less memory using AOT. That saves us money when running in the cloud or allows us to run more instances in parallel using the same hardware resources. That's great and all, but what are the disadvantages of using AOT? No JIT compiler means that the native code has to be fully generated at compile time. There is no runtime code generation, no assembly loading, no reflection and no expression compilation. For example, we need extra steps to serialize JSON data. Let's quickly talk about using reflection. Reflection works on IL code because the runtime can explore the classes and properties. When you run native code, we cannot do that anymore. 
there aren't classes in native code. It means that we need to find another solution to serialize data using AOT than when using reflection. Compiling to native code using AOT takes extra time compared to compiling to IL. Also, we require platform-specific tools. For example, I use Windows and need the Visual Studio C++ tools. When you run Linux, you need CLang and Xcode is required for Mac users. Therefore, you cannot publish cross-platform using AOT. When you compile on Windows, your application is native Windows x64 code. When you compile on Linux, your executable won't run on Windows. Compared to traditional .NET applications, AOT applications aren't portable. Using modern tools such as the Windows subsystem for Linux, virtual machines or Docker containers, we can get around it. But still, we need to consider it. Last but not least, libraries need to be AOT compatible. If you use a library that uses reflection, you will run into warnings and errors when trying to publish the application using AOT. When should we use AOT? When building cloud-native APIs, AOT can help us increase the performance and decrease the resources we need to run the application. Using the traditional .NET architecture is right when we don't need that extra performance and want to keep our applications portable. Also, for some types of .NET applications, AOT is not available with .NET 8 yet. With .NET 8, the focus is on supporting cloud-native APIs. The following things are supported. Kestrel HTTP server, middleware, minimal APIs, including the request delegate generator, gRPC, JWT authentication, authorization, ADO.NET, PostgreSQL, SQLite, Dapper.AOT, and NanoNorm. Not supported yet, but a goal for future .NET versions are ASP.NET Core MVC, Web API, Razor Pages, Blazor, and Signal R, and Entity Framework Core. It's said that Entity Framework Core is a target for .NET 9. You can build APIs with ASP.NET Core using AOT, but not use the whole of ASP.NET Core Web API is supported. I strongly believe that Microsoft will do a lot and improve the support for AOT with .NET 9. Maybe we even get it for Blazor applications? We learned what AOT is, how to create a .NET application that uses AOT and what its advantages and disadvantages are. I think it's a fascinating technology that allows .NET applications to be very performant in cloud-native scenarios where it competes with other technologies. With its current state, AOT in .NET 8 is limited to building cloud-native APIs. However, I assume we will see broader support in the future. And now, what do you think of AOT in .NET 8? Let me know in the comments below. And if you want to see more videos like this, consider subscribing to the channel and I will see you in the next video.